Houston Real Estate Radio starts right now. Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. If you have a real estate question, you can call us at 281-882-8088. And we are back in the studio here with Brian Abercrombie. He is a uh, an attorney for Cordell of Cordell here in the Houston area. And we've been talking a lot about kind of what happens uh, when you get married, what happens with real property, with your uh, with your real estate and um, your real estate investments, your community property. We've been talking about that, and I want to continue our conversation. And then I've got some questions about wills as well, um, a little bit of estate planning. So welcome back to the show, Brian. Thank you. So tell me, um, you know, sometimes people will own investment properties. Let's say a couple, um, you know, one or the other owns an investment property. Maybe it was an inheritance that they decided to have as as a rental income. And, um, you know, the interest rates went down so low that it was really nice to get those sort of things refinanced. But um, I've seen cases where, or instances where, um, when they went to refinance it, uh, the lender wanted both parties, uh, in order to qualify for that low interest rate, they needed both parties on the loan. Does that affect who owns the property at that point? That can affect uh, who owns the property. If If you're refinancing, especially in situations where maybe you're taking some equity out, or, um, or you know, those types of situations, cash back refinances, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, if you if both parties then become on the title and on the loan, and then a number of years goes by where they're they're together and and um, both on the title, both paying down the mortgage, then yes, it creates a very strong you know community presumption at that point, which you know the property looks like it's being commingled or that. Um, Maybe the spouse, you know, gave gave the property, you know, to the other spouse, or any number of issues can can come up. Right. Um. So yes, it does muddy the water quite a bit. So that's where you know something like a marital property agreement, if you really want to keep that property separate, that's something where a you know a marital property agreement or a partition exchange agreement would be helpful. You know, to uh, clear just clear that because it does muddy the water quite a bit. And and you know, in a worst case you know scenario, if you're trying to keep something you know, as your separate property. Then and, and a court rules that it's community property. Then yeah, you've lost the the interest, or at least half of the interest in that. Mm-hmm. Now, um, what about if for people who are in that situation where they need to get a divorce and they want to get a divorce, they're going to get a divorce. Um, I know sometimes it can be hard for them to agree to sell the property. One of them wants to stay, continue living there. One of them doesn't, or they can't. One of them can't afford to. Um, what happens in that situation? Does the judge decide, no, nobody's staying in the house, we're going to sell it, or uh, you can stay there and we'll just take you off the title? How does that work? It can be it can be tricky. I mean, it's some, a lot of it's going to depend on the judge and, and what the judge you know, the judge wants to do. Um, a lot of times a court may order that property sold, uh, or they may allow one person to live there and, and then sign a deed, of, what's called a deed of trust to secure assumption so that the other person still has a recourse if mortgage payments aren't being made. Um, but that type of situation is very common. And uh, that type of a situation is probably best to, to try to work something out with respect to the house because um, if both, especially in situations where both people are on the mortgage, um, that the spouse, everybody's gonna move on with their life after the divorce and the, the, the tricky, the the trick would be getting out from under that mortgage so that you can get right. another mortgage, you know, going down the road. Well, and some people, um, when they had good credit when they purchased the house, and now they're going through a divorce and they don't have so good credit, they can't refinance it into their own name. They can't sell it and buy another house. So they're trying to figure out a way to be able to stay in the house with the same mortgage, but yet that spouse is on it. The that's you know that's where you know mediations and and things where you're trying to make come up with creative settlement options on a on a case that's where it becomes critical because if a judge has to decide the judge is going to have to decide that day what's going to be done with the property and the and the judges can't order people to incur debt or order people to refinance things and they can just divide up what's there so that's where you really kind of have to get creative i think and that's where you know where you know a divorce, creative divorce settlements come into play because you know maybe you, the person needs two years before they can refinance the house, or maybe that. But and that's all something that two spouses could agree on, but a judge couldn't necessarily order. So all that could be put in in a divorce decree that in two years the house would be financed 
Yes, I mean, and a divorce decree is a court order, but it's also can be, if the two parties are agreed and it's an agreed divorce order, it can be a binding contract between the two parties. So if, you know, if there's, you know, certain provisions that require a spouse to, you know, get a house refinance within two years or, or whatever the case may be, then yeah, they would be bound by that term, by the terms of that, just the same as if it was a contract. And I have seen some divorce decrees where um, where a woman, uh, especially a woman that has a lot lower income than the spouse, than than her husband does, or um, where she'll stay in the house for maybe 10 years after the divorce, continue uh, making the payments, continue living there, or maybe he's even making the payments, but the divorce decree basically says she can live there as long as she wants to, but when she sells, then he gets his equity back. Yeah, that's that does happen quite a bit. Um, that's it's tough. I would I, I most of the time advise people not to leave it that open ended. Uh, but a lot of times, people you're seeing a lot where they where they're divorcing and they have minor children, and so they're they're they want to keep the kids in the same school district right. or, or different things like that. So they're agreeing to okay, we'll we'll sell the house when the last child turns eighteen or graduates from mm-hmm. high school, and then um, you know so there's those kinds of drop dead dates on it, but. Right. Um, but yeah, you do, you probably don't want to leave something open ended like that because yeah. um, you know because then what well, can happen? <laughs> theoretically, you could live there for fifty years. Sure. <laughs> and even after the mortgage is paid off. But so now, um, can a property literally be signed over from one person to another? I mean, is that a legal thing to do? Yeah, as long as the you know you can deed property to to another person certainly. So can can parents deed their property over to children without the children paying them any money for it? Um, yeah, you can do gift deeds and different things like that. Okay. Um, but yes, you know they can they parents can deed property to to children. Okay, and. Um, Let's see. What have we not covered? What what would what have we not covered that people are going to be asking that we should have covered? Um, the biggest thing I think. I mean, the biggest thing I'm seeing I, I think is when you know when people will take advantage of low interest rates and refinance maybe a separate property house. Um, I know we touched on that briefly, but um, I've seen that a lot more and more, especially with the interest rates being as low as they are. Um, a lot of people are refinancing houses that they owned prior to marriage, and then they're coming in and saying, "Okay, we're getting divorced now. You know, what do we do about that house?" And then, of course, you know, you can certainly make legal arguments, and lawyers can certainly it opened make up legal, a claim to it. But absolutely, you opened mm-hmm. up a, you know, you kind of opened yourself up to maybe some liability there, or you know, maybe you're you're losing some a portion of an asset that you owned previously. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, that's that's a big thing we're seeing. And then also, of course, um, one. The big issues being one person's on the loan or one person maybe can't afford to keep the house. That's a big thing that's coming up is one person's the primary breadwinner and they can afford to keep the house and the other person can't. So a lot in a lot of cases, you know, sometimes that kind of solves the problem in a, in a divorce which, with who's going to keep a house. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of more creative agreements that people are coming up with so that kids can stay in houses, that, that people have time to refinance houses. But yeah. but it's that's all done typically outside of a courtroom. It's not, you know, a judge has, you know, I, I don't want to say limited options, but they do have limited options on what on what they can do as far as selling a property, ordering a piece of property to be sold or something like that. So Yeah, and one of the things that I find interesting is that, you know, when you, when you go into a divorce, each person has an attorney or, or you could share an attorney, but generally you're each going to have your own counsel. And so what I find is people come to me and go, well, I want you to be my realtor, but I don't want you to be his realtor or vice versa. And and I represent the property. I represent the people who own the property. And so I, you can't have two realtors on one side of a, of a real estate transaction. Right. And you and you can't have one attorney for two, in a, in a divorce context, you can't have one attorney for two spouses. So you can't not, do that here. Okay. At least not in Texas. Okay. okay. Um, but uh, but that being said, I mean, the, the spouse can direct the attorney as to what they want the attorney to do. And So do you find that people have a hard time finding a realtor that they both agree on? Um, yes, I, yeah, that comes up a lot because you know one person will think that they have a closer personal relationship, right? With the other person right, that's and, what they always think. Yeah, and, and I, I, my, my, you know, my experience is that realtors are trying to maximize, you know, the sale of a property right. to get, you know, get the most that they can out of it. So I don't mm-hmm. know why they would, you know, align themselves with one spouse over the other to then to try to undercut somebody because yeah. that wouldn't necessarily help their bottom. Well, I, yeah, and I, I've seen them just really like 
cut off the hand that feeds them. I mean, like literally they'll say, I don't want to use this realtor who specializes in our neighborhood because, you know, she knows you too well or whatever. We want to use somebody outside the neighborhood. Well, that person outside of the community who doesn't know that neighborhood is probably going to get you less money. So right. you kind of, you know, it, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. I agree. I, I, I do. I, you do see that a lot, especially if, if one spouse is in real, in the real estate um industry or mm-hmm. you know, they know a lot of realtors or, or things like that. You definitely see that a lot more. Yeah. But I mean, with, with kind of the standards that they put on, on realtors and the, and the standards that they put on, you know, appraisers that are appraising property, you're not going to come into a lot of those kinds of issues where somebody's trying to undercut somebody else. Right. And I think that consumers don't realize that. I mean, we fall under so many different regulations from right, our licensing to, right. yeah, I mean, so it just, just, you wouldn't see that happen. Um, Real quickly, let's see. We talked about um, we didn't talk about adopted children. How are ad- how are adopted children different from regular children when it comes to um, estates? Same or different? They're not. They're treated the same as as if you as if the child is biological. So if if you're inheriting um, a mu- inheriting a piece of property, they would inherit in the, at, in the same level as as a as a biological child. Where it gets tricky is if somebody has a, a, a child or an adopted child, and then they marry another person, and then that person doesn't necessarily adopt the child. Um, that's where it gets kind of tricky, I think, because because that person doesn't necessarily have a tie to the adopted child because they didn't adopt the child. So um, the adopted child wouldn't necessarily inherit from that mm-hmm. step. I guess it would be a step parent uh-huh. at that point. Um, so that becomes tricky. So how do you fix that when someone's, you know, 30 years old? You, normally you don't want to go back and adopt them when they're 30 years old. So how do you fix that you with a can. will? I mean, they do do adult adoptions. Okay. So they're they're And it's for those kinds of things. But the easy, it, that's kind of, it is kind of a complicated legal matter in terms of an adult adoption. But so the easiest way to probably do that, clear that up is with a will or with state will. planning. Because you can will your property to anybody you want. So you can give it okay. to, you know, Disney World or, or, <laughs> or Mickey Mouse or whoever. But um, you can will your property to whoever you want. So you could obviously make provision in your will to. Sure. And, and that happens a lot with stepchildren if there's a very close relationship with the, because you wouldn't necessarily inherit from a step parent. So a step parents are making more and more provisions in their, you know, estate planning for, for their stepchildren. Um, but that's something they have to affirmatively do. The, and in Texas, at least, if you don't have a will, there's, you know, an intestate succession where biological children or even adopted children would inherit, you know, from their parents, mm-hmm. um, even absent a will. But, um, you know, it's it's better to have a will. Yeah. So, um, so, so you, you always recommend a will? Yeah. I do. I mean, if you own if you own property in Texas, it's better to have a will. I've um, you know, I've always always heard if at the time when you own real estate, it's probably time to go ahead and get a will. Mm-hmm. Um, that's you know, that's um, the house is probably the single biggest investment that most people ever make. So you know, the the house is you know, it's where you live. It's you know, it's where your children grow up, and and so it's better to have a lot of that stuff very very clear. So and if and you need to protect your investments. I mean, right. it's a uh, it's a significant amount of money and a significant amount of time is spent in the in the house. So sure. you know, you need to protect you know protect what you have. Absolutely. Well, we definitely appreciate your information. Brian Abercrombie with uh, Cordell Cordell out of Houston. Um, He is an attorney who's given us a lot of really great information. Um, Gosh, I think we've I think we hit it all. A a lot of really good information. I mean, if you're if you're thinking about buying property um, or selling property and you've had any changes in your marital status, I think we covered it. Yeah, so we definitely hit the big ones. <laughs> All right. If you have any other questions, you can always call us, 281-882-8088. We can find the answers to your questions and answer them right here on the air on Houston Real Estate Radio. We have lots of questions that we've answered in the past at HoustonRealEstateRadio.com. The call in number again, 281-882-8088. And we'll be right back.